Okay, we're gonna play a little game. I'm gonna show you two frequency response of a speaker measurement that I took, and based on the measurements alone, I want you to tell me which speaker you would buy. Yes, usually you will get to listen to it and all that kind of stuff, but you don't get to do that here. For the sake of this game, you have 10 seconds. Let's go. Now the great thing about this game is that even if you chose A or B, it doesn't really matter. You are all winners because they are the exact same speakers. Yes, they are, indeed. And looking at these graphs side by side, you might be wondering how that is possible. They, they look so different. And if you didn't guess that, then I guess the joke's on me. And good for you being an expert. But the whole point I'm trying to prove here is that because my graph is on a 50 dB scale, meaning usually it's from 50 to 100 dB, and that's usually the measurements that I take on my channel. But usually sometimes manufacturers or some other measurement guys would put it on a different scale, like a 120 dB scale. And all that does is kind of compresses the graph so that it looks better. So when looking at a frequency graph, it's important to realize that you're not just looking at squiggly lines and seeing how flat the line is if you want a flat speaker. And by no means am I advocating for a completely flat loudspeaker. However, a plus 10 dB in difference is a big difference. And if a manufacturer is compressing the graph to make that 10 dB difference look like more like a 3 dB difference, then that is a little bit misleading. Actually, a lot misleading. You may very much be buying a speaker thinking that it measures pretty flat, but it actually has a 10 dB peak at the treble, ripping your ears apart every time you turn on that music. And this is because as human beings, we're pretty sensitive to the decibel level changes. Don't believe me? Well, here's an example. Now, all I did there was reduce the volume by 3 dB. And you might be thinking, well, obviously I hear that. You just reduce the volume. And that's exactly what frequency response is. So if you see a negative 3 dB point or a 3 dB rise somewhere in the graph, that means that in that portion of the graph, instruments, vocals, anything that is within that range of that frequency is going to be 3 dB lower or 3 dB higher, depending on how it measures on the frequency graph. But if you have it on a 120 dB scale, that becomes a little bit hard to see because it is so, so compressed. So when we talk about a colored sound or a more fun sounding loudspeaker, a deviation in plus minus 5 dB or a little bit more than that is fine. You know, within plus minus 5 dB is what I personally find it to be acceptable and in no way am I advocating for flat linear speakers because what I personally enjoy is a little bit of that recessedness on the upper mid range myself. But some people like it plus minus 3 dB, you know, for accurate studio monitors, even plus minus 2 dB across the entire frequency spectrum. And that's because we're actually very sensitive to the decibel changes once again, and you can even decipher difference between 1 dB of change. For myself, I have very sensitive hearing. And I'm not saying that I have golden ears or anything, but when I got my hearing tested, I could detect a 0.5 dB in difference in the decibel range. And that means that I just have very sensitive hearing. That's the lowest I can go, that's fantastic. Which means he has sensitive hearing. Not, not necessarily, but he can really hear those low sounds. And that can be a detriment sometimes because I hear things, very quiet noises um, that's coming from like the refrigerator and stuff like this, the power supply that my other family members don't hear. So once again, I'm not saying that I have super hearing, just that people can have different level of sensitivity in their hearing, but usually they're able to hear at least plus minus 5 dB of difference, whether they like it or not. And that brings us back to a graph like this, a ridiculously stretched graph like this all it does is compress the graph to where it looks like it's very linear and flat. But in reality, when you look at the decibel level in relation to the frequency graph, it doesn't tell you much on what you're going to be exactly hearing the decibel changes. All you can see is that it's within plus minus 10 dB or so. And that is not a great indicator on what you're going to actually hear in your system. But why does this matter anyways? Isn't audio subjective and we have different taste in music, speakers, amplifiers, etc.? Yes. However, guess how your speakers were designed? They weren't designed 
by mistake, they were designed through engineering principles, meaning they took the measurement, the manufacturer, the speaker designer took the measurement of the tweeter, the midwoofer, put it out in an FRD file, yes, frequency response of individual drivers, put into a file called FRD, and then they design a crossover around it to make sure that those drivers blend properly. So yeah, it does tell you exactly how a speaker is supposed to sound and how it's tuned. It's a very great tool to learn and to really understand. But as you've seen, it can be also used to mislead people into thinking that a speaker measures really good or measures really bad. For example, I can really punch into this graph and going from my 50 dB scale to 25 dB scale to make this graph look terrible even though it's actually pretty decent. So next time you take a look at a frequency response, make sure to understand what kind of scale the graph is on. And the easiest way to do this is to take the top number on the y-axis and subtract it with the lowest number on the y-axis. So I hope this video was helpful and entertaining, and I'll see you guys on my next video. Until next time, rock on.